Hey, Andrew. Hi, Steve. How are you? I've got uh, Madeline and Angela Hi. here with me, too. Hello. How are you guys? Doing well. Yeah. How are you? Okay. We're good. We're still trying to keep track of time here in our apartment, which is where we've been doing most of our work these days. <laughs> right. Yeah, so this is technically my office, but you'll notice kind of like there's bread back here. Okay, okay. Yeah. Just around the corner, we can take you on a tour too of and show uh, what's going on out there. Uh, we have uh, uh, one of our graduates is packing grocery bags right now. Oh, so okay. We have the door closed, but we'll put on a mask when we go out there. To... Oh, very nice. Uh, could you give us a little bit of background about each of you and how you got involved with St. James? I guess, Reverend, could we, could we start with you? Yeah, sure. So um, I first came to the property in 2008 in, the, in November of that year. And the property at that time was abandoned largely. The church had been closed and I was brought here by the Reverend Sean Mullen at St. Mark's Church in Center City. And we began to dream about what we could do here to reopen the, the campus. And we started working with uh, Rosalie Cooper, the president of the RAH Civic Association. And we ended up starting the summer camp, city camp that year in 2009, uh, which led to the foundation of an after school program and then to the school. So I've been involved since 2008 on the campus and I've been the chaplain here for the past four years. Excellent. Madeline, hi. Hi. <laughs> Um, so I've been working at St. James for the last year. Uh, previous to that, I was working at St. Mark's in Center City um, and ran the food cupboard there and then transitioned over here to uh, working in the welcome table. And it's been a, a great joy. Excellent. Excellent. Angel, hello. Hi. Um, I started at St. James about two years ago. This is my second year now. Um, and I usually would be teaching social studies um, and doing ministry stuff. And now um, it's kind of full time in the welcome table, which has been really wonderful to see the community and get to know people um, and to deal with a lot of food. Um, yeah. It's been really uh, fun and exciting to be here um, and see how the community has changed. Yeah. Steve, Madeline and Angel are part of a program that we have here at St. James called the Servant Year Program. It's a program for young adults who are out of, just out of college or roughly out of college to come and do vocational discernment. They live in community here on campus and uh, get some experience and kind of think about what might be next in their life. Oh, wonder wonderful. Uh, and uh, we're here today for a couple of reasons, but primarily the uh, welcome table. But also first, let's just talk a little bit about uh, all three of you have been on campus during the entire lockdown. Uh, St. James, uh, for those who don't uh, know about it, is a tuition-free private Episcopal middle school uh, that provides students with year-round academic, physical, spiritual, uh, and creative nourishment uh, while working to uplift the surrounding community, which is in the Allegheny West section of Philadelphia. Uh, so uh, could, uh, it, I guess any one of you could feel free to start, but what's, uh, what's your experience been like uh, during this uh, lockdown period? Well, Father Kellner's a great cook, so we've been eating a lot of great food, which has been awesome. Um, we're also very fortunate, so there were six of us quarantined on the campus during this time. Um, and it's been actually a remarkable experience of a team coming together in a new way, because, you know, we've worked with a lot of other people but to be quarantined with just us, we kind of formed a newly tight-knit community. Um, we work together really well, so it's been honestly pretty silly. We had a lot of fun, but uh, we've been working really hard and it's been good, yeah. Yeah. What's the value if it can't be fun, right? Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think you've been able to kind of not only connect with the community more, but connect with each other more. Um, and we would have um, daily mass every day, and um, be able to like have dinner together um, more regularly than we would during the normal school year even. Um, and so it's kind of been an interesting way to um, build community really quickly um, and uh, show uh, each other um, in a different way than we usually would, um, just show different types of care and um, being present to one another. Excellent. Yeah, I'd also say it's been really uh, good to have people to talk through all of this, right? So um, having the six of us who live here on campus, having each other to meet as a whole community together to kind of talk through how are we going to do this? How are we going to protect each other? How are we going to keep each other safe? How are we going to, you know, what precautions we're going to take so that 
we can continue to do the work that we, we feel called to do in our neighborhood. Uh, and just have individual conversations too, so that we could feel supported during this time and have outlets to talk about all of the changes and all the difficulties and things like that um, and things going on in our world too. As a spiritual uh, guide, uh, I noticed you're also mentioned as a neighborhood chaplain. How's the, the, the spirit or the, um, the mood of the neighborhood changed during the, the time that you've been in lockdown? Yeah, so, so I lived here on campus for eight years now. And um, there are lots of people I don't know and didn't know in my neighborhood. You know, lots of neighbors who I just never got to, a, a chance to meet. And during this time, I've gotten to meet so many of them, actually, um, through the Ministry of the Welcome Table, or getting out and taking a walk and, and getting to see people who I wouldn't normally see at different times of the day, another thing. And it's just been really very good to, um, I think the spirit of the neighborhood is it's coming together. I mean, last night we had a little uh, rally, a uh, Black Lives Matter kind of rally for the neighborhood to kind of talk about things. And we had members who have lived in the neighborhood for 38, 40 years saying similar things. And there are a lot of members they didn't know before this time. Mm -hmm. And they've been to get to know one another better. And so even in the midst of a pandemic, I feel like our neighborhood has grown closer together in supporting one another uh, throughout this time. Excellent. Uh, Madeline, you're uh, the director of the Welcome Table. What's your experience been? Have you, uh, you have more people now? I mean, we had, uh, there was, I saw the YouTube video from mid-April where you, you know, you packed a bag, you showed all the things that go into it, the proteins, the snacks, all that sort of thing. Uh, how has the experience been of, of late with the welcome table? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely changed. Um, traffic has picked up in a, in a good way. Um, and one thing I, I would echo too from what Father Kilmer said is, uh, so the welcome table is a sharing community. That's what, how we like to talk about it. Um, you know, you come, you get what you need, you leave what you can, um, that sort of thing. But the amount of neighbors that are wanting to pick up food for you know, an elderly woman down the street who might not uh, be able to get down here. There's just been a kind of remarkable sense of like, we're all in this together sort of thing. Um, so that definitely like has even picked up and especially as we've gotten to know people and gotten to know maybe even the people they're taking the food to, um, there's a real sense of camaraderie with that. Um, the other thing I would add is just like, it's taken some streamlining and in, in the way that we are planning it. So you know, for a while we were doing grocery bags every day and we realized that's not super sustainable in the way that we were doing it. So we've started um, adjusting, you know, our schedules as to make sure that we're working in the smartest way possible to be able to make the most impact. Um, so in that way it's changed, but in a lot of it, I think the heart's the, the same as it's been from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Angel, do you have any particular memorable moments uh, from these last few months? Anything that's really sticks out to you? Um, I think something that I've really appreciated is seeing the children um, of the community, whether it's um, uh, students that I haven't seen in a while or children I had never seen that just started to stop by because they were bored um, or um, seeing um, elderly members of the community that I hadn't really talked to before. And um, something I really appreciated doing was we had like a voter registration table um, and there were some people that I had never met before who had lived in the community for a really long time and they like, would talk to me and I would talk to them and they'd say like, I've lived on Patton Street for this long and, you know, I know these are the issues that I'm, you know, interested in talking about. Mm -hmm. um, I think just having more connections with people that I didn't get to know um, throughout you know, the years that I've lived here has been um, really wonderful and generative. Um, so, yeah. Excellent. Uh, so let's take a look uh, then at the uh, at the welcome table uh, and then we'll ask you a few questions about that. So if you'd like to lead us over there, we'd be, we'd be happy to go. Yeah, most certainly. We're putting on our masks. We have a, a, a colleague who's over there packing. He's one of our graduates from the school. Uh, so he's packing bags right now. Uh, so we're just gonna put on these masks and we'll go for a little walk right through this door. And, This is uh, John Taylor. He's one of our graduates. He's helping us out now. And you can see that right now things are pretty full. And you want to give us a tour of what we've got going on in here. Yeah, so right here we have kind of our protein symbol. I cannot tell it tight. Um, so canned meat especially. Uh, 
here we've got well when we're a little bit more stocked is the pasta and pasta sauce moving into you know peanut butter jelly and then most of our assorted snacks and fruits and things are over there so yeah and then over here we have uh two fridges and two freezers so whatever you know fresh produce we might have or frozen veggies or frozen meals um house in there we've also taken over the uh refrigeration of the school uh, so that the, um, that's used for, we get a large milk delivery now through SHARE, the SHARE food program, mm -hmm. and that, uh, we use that to store that. And we've turned one of our uh, storage rooms into kind of a cold storage room. We turn on the air conditioning as low as it can go. Mm -hmm. We have to store some produce just overnight before we give it away. Uh, we give away uh, 5,500 pounds of produce uh, in one day, and then uh, we turn around and we do a little bit more produce and uh, uh, frozen meat products on uh, another day as well. So, excellent. Out pretty good. Yeah. And, and where are you actually? Uh, wh who are you partnering with to 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 get some of these uh, these things? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, we partner with several organizations. Routes Food Market down in Center City. Um, they have a program that gets. Uh, Food that would have either gone bad like the next day or something instead of just throwing it out there are organizations that can come by and pick it up so we're fortunate to be on that list um every once in a while trader joe's the same thing um and then share uh food program just right down the street just like a couple blocks away uh is kind of our main source of um i would say main partnership right now especially during the pandemic yeah with especially with dairy and fresh produce and stuff but we also have a partnership to Bruno Brothers. Uh, they provided us with cases of, of pasta and sauce throughout this time, which has been really wonderful. Uh, we have uh, partnerships with a lot of churches, uh, Episcopal churches uh, in the area, St. Christopher's in Gladwin, St. David's in uh, Wayne, St. Albans, Newtown Square, St. Martin, Martin in the Fields in Chestnut Hill. Um, these are all churches, St. Peter's in the Great Valley, these are all churches who weekly uh, bring us large amounts of grocery items especially and even do some fresh baking so that when you are getting like your staple food items you also can get uh, some homemade cookies or some brownies or something like that too. Yeah. And I understand that you also occasionally get uh, frozen meals. Uh, yeah every once in a while so especially yeah. with the sprouts um, those come in like you know packaged it'll have a meat and a side and that kind of thing. Um, we also have a neighbor who started recently uh, their partners with a food program and they can't use all of their food so we get it from them as well um so yeah lots of lots of variation in the food that we're getting yeah, yeah. We had, uh, go ahead uh, church of the redeemer brinmar that uh they had a group of uh students who um with their families packed meal bags of their favorite meals with recipe cards and things and they sent it to our families and then we were able to send back to them meal packages and meal ideas from our family so it was a nice exchange that happened back and forth between uh different groups of kids so that was a lovely great. idea wow and very and very supportive that's great uh what um you also mentioned that you have your garden on site there and you said you've actually expanded it and that does uh support the welcome table as well. It most certainly does. Uh, we can walk out there and see if we can uh, take a look, if that'd be okay. Let's so take a look, yes, please. We typically get new chickens every uh, three years. As Okay. I've got you, yeah. So this is our garden area. Right now we're harvesting a lot of colored greens and kale and distributing that. We also have some we'll go out soon. And then we have our chicken coop, one of our chicken coops. Uh, that we are able with our neighbors and, and uh, help us out. We also have some beehives on campus that help with pollination and improve our yield in our garden. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. And I see you have a sign for eggs there as well. Oh yes, oh yes. Excellent. Yeah, uh, so yeah, that's, I mean, is there, I mean, we're going into, we're into the yellow phase now with uh, green coming down the, the pike. Uh, any uh, plans to adapt things as you move forward or any lessons learned that you'll be implementing as we go forward? Well, I would say that one of the things that we did was as a community, we've been having meet, a community who lives residentially here, uh, we've been having meetings just about um, how we can sustain the growing community presence we've had um, and what that might look like um, even beyond um, all of this. Um, 
because as Madeline said, we are a sharing community, a community of sharing that uh, we um, think that that's an important thing that helps not just feed people, but also uh, helps to build community and build up our neighborhood. So um, we've, we implemented a plan where we did decrease the number of days that we are giving away food, uh, but did it in a systematic way so that we were giving more away on the days that we are giving away food. And um, all in hopes of kind of moving towards kind of having a, a kind of Saturday uh, farmer's market type feel of things, you know, that we are a place where people would come and, and eventually not have to wear masks uh, at some point in time, get a cup of coffee, mm -hmm. be with friends, and uh, again, continue to strengthen that community. Yeah, I don't really have much to add. I mean, it's kind of an exciting future in a way because um, I think there was a sense last year in the way that we were, you know, working in the welcome table that there, there was kind of an itch, like, there's something else we could be doing. Um, we hadn't really put our finger on it quite yet. And now, um, as the need has arisen, but also, like, this just wonderful community of friends, there's all of a sudden a really neat opportunity for us to continue with it um, and to deepen the roots of it. So it's exciting. Great. Angel, what would you like to see going forward? Any uh, hopes or, or or ideal outcomes, I guess, as we move into, well, back to normal, quote unquote? Um, I think it will be interesting to see how the community grows um, and how we kind of, how the school community and the neighborhood community kind of become more integrated as a result of the welcome table and seeing how we can um, share space and share um, things together as things kind of stabilize. Um, it'll be interesting to see like what kinds of activities, events, mm -hmm. things that we can do um, to make the community stronger um, as a result of all of this. Excellent. Uh, I guess the last thing is we generally like to uh, give our viewers or readers uh, an action step. Is there something that they can do to, to assist your efforts there? We're always accepting food donations, um, so that is always part of it. Um, more protein, the better, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but also going forward, I mean, we're going to have, I think, all kinds of opportunities. And most of those, I would say, stay tuned for, but like possibilities for volunteering, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, I would say that, you know, one of the things that we've learned that's really important to do is if you don't know your neighbors, you get to know them. I mean, that's, uh, I think, one of the really important action steps because you can't help uh, share what you have unless you know that somebody might need it, you know, or you can't, you know, meet somebody's need unless you know what that is. So uh, get out there and meet your neighbors and uh, kind of take that, that first step. And it's a way of um, kind of taking the spirit of the welcome table into your, your home and into your neighborhood as well. Oh, wow. That's a wonderful note to, uh, to end it on. Uh, I thank you all, all for giving us time to, to sit down and talk with us a little bit. You know, thank you very much. This has been very informative and what a wonderful effort. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Okay, you take care. Thanks again. Bye-bye.